You may not have known this, but the Earth once had rings. Usually, Saturn is the planet that comes to mind when we think about rings. However, once upon a time, Earth could have had its own band of dusty particles. It was due to a phenomenon called ring ray, really. Our planet was surrounded by lots of little rocks and dust, perhaps the remnants of a hypothesized ancient planet, Theia. This protoplanet could have existed in the early solar system, and scientists assume that one day it could have collided with the early Earth. In that case, huge remnants of this collision would form our precious moon, and smaller rocks would result in the rings. In any case, the particles were pulled toward Earth's surface by gravity. All this happened around 4.5 billion years ago, shortly after Earth's formation. We know about them thanks to various sources. For example, we found some tiny glass beads in ancient rocks, which might have formed due to intense heat during ring particles' entry into Earth's atmosphere. We also found things like traces of isotopes in ancient rocks. Now, these rings would be much smaller than Saturn's, though, and weren't icy like Saturn's, so they weren't glowing. Our rings were mostly made of rock and dust. Scientists believe that they started around 620 miles above sea level, extending to the Roche limit. They'd be farther away from Earth in our International Space Station and most satellites. From the equator, the rings look like a straight line across the sky. But if you move north or south, they widen, creating a celestial arc. Near the North Pole, they will gain a subtle twilight effect. But unlike Saturn's rings that endure, Earth's were fleeting. Blame the Sun! Earth's proximity caused water ice particles, potential ring makers, to turn into gas, leaving no bling behind. Ultraviolet light from the Sun stripped away the rest. But what if Earth kept those rings? Imagine seeing this celestial spectacle day and night. Visually, it would be stunning, floating elegantly above our planet. During the day, we'd be adorned with their shimmer, and at night, they would be so bright and mesmerizing that they would even outshine the full moon. However, their impact on our lives wouldn't be that cool. First of all, the luminosity reflected off the rings might confuse nocturnal creatures, like dung beetles or swallow-tailed gulls. They're guided by the starlight, so poor creatures would be very confused by all this extra glow. This would disrupt their natural behaviors. The shadow cast by the rings could mess with our weather patterns as well. It would affect sunlight levels and pose a challenge for photosynthesis. Temperatures on the planet would change depending on the thickness and composition of the rings. They would impact our seasons and, potentially, cause even cooler winters and hotter summers. Satellites in Earth orbit might have faced some chaos as well. Space rocks hurtling at them could spell trouble for our high-tech companions. Perhaps things would be better if we kept them initially and evolved with them already existing, adapted to them. But if they suddenly appeared right now, it would cause tons of problems. Well, good thing that only Saturn has rings now. Or maybe not only Saturn. Its glowing bands and the famous Cassini division are visible even through a small telescope or binoculars of an amateur astronomer. They're super old and might have formed back at the times when dinosaurs roamed Earth. But in reality, all four giant planets in our solar system Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune have them. Their stunning sets of rings are composed of tons of tiny dust particles, a mix of rocks and ice, ranging from tiny bits to sizes as big as a house. It varies from planet to planet, and each of them has its own material makeup. To find out more about this makeup, we can simply look at them. Some particles are as tiny as sand grains, while others are as big as double-decker buses. We also look at how reflective they are and how much they sparkle. Saturn's rings, for example, are mostly water eyes, and they look like sparkly frozen droplets. Jupiter's rings, however, are more dusty with fine rocky particles, similar to asteroids. Uranus keeps its ring material a secret, but it's dark and not so sparkly, hinting it's not water eyes. Instead, it could be carbon or carbon-containing dust, maybe even charcoal. And Neptune takes it up a notch. Its rings are even darker, suggesting superfine dust, maybe carbon or methane ice. Scientists also study what sort of light these particles emit. 
They split this light into a spectra and look at the ring's secrets. For example, water ice, iron, and organic tholins are given the rings a reddish tint. And these giants are not the only ones in the universe who have this cool feature. For example, there's a planet way beyond our solar system called J1407b. It has rings 200 times wider than Saturn's, and it looks insane. The planet was called Super Saturn by NASA. On the other end, there's an object with only two tiny rings called 10199 Car Iclo. If the Super Saturn is most likely a giant with huge gravity, then this thing is very tiny. It's not even a planet. It's the so-called centaur, which is what we call small celestial bodies. In the case of faraway planets, usually we find their rings thanks to radio waves. All planets or satellites send out radio signals. When these signals pass through the rings around them, it results in a weird and pretty crazy symphony. The size and weight of particles in the rings decide the notes. For example, lighter particles, like aluminum, have their own groove, which is different from iron's. Now, the true mystery is how they're formed at all. Each of the planets in our solar system has its own ring history. In Saturn's case, scientists thought that maybe it had some huge moon, and then this moon broke apart for some reason, after a collision, for example, resulting in fascinating rocky bands. But if we sum up all the rocks, they don't result in a big enough object. So that theory most likely isn't true. They might have appeared because of the collision, but between some other objects. Jupiter's faint rings come from dust particles flung into orbit by micrometeorites. Neptune has not really rings, but rather arcs. They're not complete circles around a planet, but just parts of the circle. They're influenced by the gravitational pull of the moon Galatea. And finally, Uranus's mysterious rings, like red and blue ones, puzzle scientists. We have no idea where they came from. Same with Super Saturn and a centaur we mentioned before. The rings in our solar system have their own future. The sad truth is that Saturn will lose its iconic rings one day. NASA's Cassini spacecraft show that they're slowly being pulled into the planet by gravity and magnetic fields. It happens so fast that Saturn's ring ring could fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool every half hour. So one day, what was once a spectacular sight stretching 22 times the length of Earth will shrink to almost nothing, becoming just a tiny part of Saturn. But hey, don't worry, despite the speed, it will take about 1 to 300 million years for all the rings to fully vanish. But there's an upside. Mars might gain its own rings one day, although it will take a long time too. In the next 30 to 50 million years, Mars could witness its moon Phobos breaking apart and forming a dazzling band around the planet. The pieces that don't contribute to the ring will create craters on the Martian surface. So let's hope we won't live on this planet by that time. Scientists in NASA hope to study the rings of different planets better in the future. In the meantime, the James Webb Space Telescope will keep scanning and analyzing them. Let's hope that we'll learn more about their mysteries and our solar system's history. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.